Hello. In this video, I want to create a chart that has a dynamic date axis. And the date axis can be switched by the user to show yearly, monthly or daily resolution. This is really useful if you want to look at a trend, a timeline, with the ability to zoom in on pieces of the timeline and see those in more detail. I'm going to look at how to do that in Power BI. Throughout the video, I'm going to show building using the AdventureWorks dataset. So if you have that and want to build along, you'll be able to use that. So let's start by looking at the standard functionality and using a parameter. And the parameter is going to switch the axis out in our view and change the date resolution for us. So to build the parameter, I go into the report view and I select the modeling ribbon and in there you'll find a button to create a new parameter. And in this, I'm going to select the option to create a parameter based on fields. Now my data model already contains a calendar table, a date dimension, and that gives me actually everything that I'm going to need for this switching. The date table has one row for every date in my, uh, in my date range, and it includes columns that give me the individual dates, the start of the month date, the start of the quarter date, and the start of the year date. And I'm going to add each of these fields to my parameter so that when I switch the parameter, it'll actually select one of these columns and bring that into a view for me. You can think of it as building a date table just like you see on the right of the screen. And we can use the parameter to add a slicer to our view. And if we select an individual selection there, for example, date or start of month, it'll actually reduce the columns in that table and just bring in the columns we've selected. So that's a really useful and simple way of building out a, a switchable uh, date scale. And we can see this in action in uh, this chart here. We've actually built the, uh, uh, the chart, the line chart, using the parameter date. And you can see that as we change the switch parameter on the left, then the column that's brought in is different. So we're going from date to start of month to start of quarter and to start of year. And that's actually giving us the data points that you see on the line chart on the right. And in fact, what's happening here is we're taking a, a table effectively with multiple columns and we're switching out the column that we're using to build our line chart on the right. All right, so this is effectively a column switching method. And we can see that what the parameter has done is actually to add a table to our data model. And this table is actually visible. We can open it up and we can see the DAX expression that's being used. And it's quite an interesting table, actually. The switching parameter uses a function called name of. And what the name of function does is it actually brings back the column that you've uh, put in the arguments to the function, right? So for date, it's bringing back the, the date column. And for start of month, it's bringing back that uh, start of month lookup, etc. So this approach is really good in as much as it's pretty simple to build and uh, the out of the box functionality uh, makes it easy for us as developers to uh, put this together, but it's also pretty intuitive for users to use as well. It's a straightforward switch to change the, the granularity of your data axis. But there may be times when we want to have a little bit more functionality. What if we want to use a single switch to change the date resolution and the date range? Or what if we even want to automate that whole thing so that as the user drills in on uh, a, a particular range of dates, the resolution automatically scales. For this, we're going to need to build some custom functionality and use some DAX expressions to do that. So let's take a look at what this might look like. Here you can see a custom table that uh, has been built to allow us to, uh, to switch this date range functionality. Unlike the parameter, which changes out columns, what this custom table does is it stacks different date ranges or different date resolutions effectively one on top of the other in uh, the form of a union. Now I'm showing this in somewhat simplified form, uh, but you can see the idea here pretty well. In both of these tables, if you look at the top part of the table, you can see that the dates go day by day. So we're going through different dates, stepping up one day at a time. 
and then in the bottom half you can see that we've bolted on an extra piece of the table where the dates actually go in month steps so we're switching uh, from one month to the next month in a single step and this means that and you can see that we've got a, a granularity uh, label and we've got an order label if we filter this to a particular granularity we actually have a very flexible way of changing the date resolution simply by bringing in those uh, different dates and we don't have to switch the column we're actually using the same table the same column throughout but we're just filtering which pieces of it we use the order column in our table actually does the same thing as we saw in a parameter what that does is it allows us to bring in labels or bring these in in a particular order so that we're not again dependent on alphabetical sorting we can actually put a slicer um, and build that in a, a meaningful way let's have a look at the way this is done in uh, the dax expressions so what we're doing is we're creating a new table and we can do that in the uh, model view we can go to a uh, new table selection and uh, bring in a new table and this is using add columns so that we can bring in a date range and we're bringing this date range straight out of our date table we're simply using values to copy every individual date from the date table and then we're adding three more columns the viz date the granularity and the order now the viz date and the granularity are going to reflect those pieces of the table that we want so at the top of this you can see that we're bringing in uh, dates day by day and then in the bottom part of this you can see that we're actually bringing in the start of the month so that date function is um, is, is looking at uh, the, uh, the the year and month combinations that we, we want to bring in and it's actually creating dates, uh, viz dates uh, for us out of that. You can see the order is just manually added to each of those tables. So that's there for the, uh, the sorting that we want. And then we wrap that whole thing in a union expression. And what the union does is it brings all of those individual tables and individual date granularities into one single combined table. Now I've simplified the table a little bit here. When you actually build this, you'll see that you have one uh, row per day and uh, the month dates for example are going to just repeat themselves and the year dates or the quarter dates whatever you bring in will just repeat itself but once you bring that into a visualization then that'll actually aggregate nicely to the month level to the year level uh, whatever you've built what we need next is some method of selecting the date resolution that we want to see. And again, we're going to create a table for this. This is going to be used uh, in a slicer and it's a simple table. We don't need anything special here. We just need the different names of the granularities we're looking at and we need some order to those. And we could do that manually or we can do it by using a summarize columns expression that just goes through that custom table we built and brings in all of the different granularities that we built in. So now we have a, sli a slicer or a table that we can use for a slicer and um, we're ready to go and, uh, and, and start building this up. But the one thing we're still missing is a, a mechanism that links up the selection table and the custom date table and actually makes the whole thing work. And for that, we're going to uh, use a measure we're actually going to create a, a new measure which is going to do that switching for us and the measure we're creating in this case i've called that uh, date filter uh, what this is going to do is it's going to look at the values that have been selected in the slicer and it's going to compare those to the individual values on the rows of our custom date table and Wherever those rows match the value that's in the selected table, we're going to bring back a one. And for every other, um, every other granularity, we're going to bring back zero. So effectively, we're putting a flag, a one or a zero, to say which level of granularity did we select. And we'll be able to use that flag later on as a filter to build out our visualization. And you can actually see the flag here on the left-hand side. If you look at that table you can see the date filter column has a one where day is selected 
and for the month you can see that it's at zero. Now you can actually see this working. You can actually see a switching from the resolution of day to the resolution of month. But there was something I had to do to actually make sure that this would work well. In fact, there were two things that I still needed to do here. The first thing is I need to add that filter mechanism to my line chart. And if you look on the right hand side of this, you can see that we've added a granularity as the filter. And we've done a filter as a top one using our date filter measure. It sounds a little bit complicated, but this makes sure that we're only bringing in the granularity uh, at the level that's been selected. And you can see that switching there in the chart from monthly to daily. But still, we're not completely there. This is giving us the date axis switching. But I actually, uh, to use this, I need to link the measure that I'm displaying to the date axis. Remember, we've created a custom table with a viz date in it. And I have to tell Power BI that there's a relationship between that and the measure that I'm using. Now, I could do that by actually creating a relationship and hardwiring that into my data model. But that can actually make your data models pretty complex, pretty full. And an alternative to that is to create a virtual relationship. And I can do that using the treat as function. So what you see here is we're showing the quantity and uh, the treat as function allows us to bring in calendar dates and use those effectively to, uh, to, to replace or stand in for the date switching dates in our custom table. And um, just so you can see that if you look at the table on the left of this viz, you can see that the total quantity measure without the virtual relationship simply doesn't get split up. Uh, you see the total for the entire table everywhere. Once I add in that virtual relationship, you can see the column on the right is actually responding to the date split. And we're seeing what you'd expect to see, which is the breakdown in the chart. So that's um, a very flexible approach and we can add functionality to this as well with actually relatively minor modifications. And um, the next modification I'd like to look at is to switch the granularity of our date axis. So the resolution of our date axis and the dates range. If you look at the chart here, the line chart, it's covering all of the dates in our data set. But I want to be able to select a specific range of dates and according to that selection, change whether we see it uh, daily or monthly. I'm going to do that with a simple tweak to our uh, expression. Instead of bringing in the entire calendar uh, lookup with the values, I'm actually going to bring in a specific date range in each piece of the table. So what you see here is the, the union has those two dates tables in it. It has the, the date granularity on top and it has the month granularity on the bottom. And I've changed out the, the date range uh, for a specific date range. Now, in this case, what I've done is I've said, if you uh, select MTD, so month to date, I'm going to show you a daily level of granularity and I'm only going to show you uh, dates for April 2022. If you select year to date, you're going to get a date range from the beginning of the year up to the latest date in my data set. Um, now I fixed the date ranges here just to keep the uh, expression simple, but you can see the idea. It would be relatively simple to add your own date ranges to this and add your own um, uh, granularity to this. And on the left, you can see how that works. So at the top, you can see we've selected month to date and we're just looking at day by day uh, uh, data points for April. And on the bottom, we've got the year to date, which goes from January right through to the end of June, and it gives you one data point per month. Now we could actually go a step further and we could say, okay, rather than fixing those, um, those ranges and that resolution, why don't we do it dynamically? So by that, I mean, I'm going to allow the user to use a standard date slicer. So adjust their own date range uh, any way they like, 
and I'm going to read that date range and according to the date range I'm going to show resolution at monthly, yearly or daily levels. And here you can see that working. You can see that as the slicer narrows down the date range, the date range is reduced on the line chart. And as we get very narrow, we suddenly switch over to daily granularity. So we start off at yearly granularity, we move through to monthly, and then as we get really tightly zoomed in, we switch over to daily. And we're doing that with a slicer that allows the user to do daily, monthly or yearly slicing themselves or dynamic slicing. And in this dynamic mode, you can see that the date filter, if you look at that table on the left hand side of the screen, you can see that that date filter is switching from yearly, now monthly. And if we just wait for that slicer to tighten right down, you'll see it moving to daily. There it goes, daily. How do we do that? Well, again, it's not that difficult. Um, we've made a modification to our custom date table. We've actually added a, a, another table at the bottom, which we called dynamic granularity. And that table effectively is a placeholder. It's going to be filled up with the, uh, the dates that, um, that we want according to the dynamic selection. Um, and we make a modification to the filter measure as well. So instead of uh, only looking at the selection on the slicer, on that selector table, we're actually adding in uh, a condition in building out the measure that looks at the number of days that uh, are selected in the view. And if that number of days is less than or equal to 90, then we're going to show daily resolution. If we are above 90, but equal to or less than 300, sorry, 730, then we'll go to monthly and anything larger than that will show at uh, yearly granularity. And you can see that the switch functionality is simply saying if any of these conditions are true, then we'll return a one. And in all other cases, we'll return a zero. So it's a pretty standard use of uh, switch functionality. And here again, you can see if we pull this all together, how this uh, works. That modified date table gives us the additional option for dynamic switching. So the user can select daily, monthly or yearly, but they can also go to dynamic. You're seeing uh, the date filter. As it tightens in, the date filter is being checked out by that um, switch calculation. And depending on which condition is met, the date filter is actually setting a one in our granularity filter and we're using that to control the resolution of the visualization. So you have several options here ranging from use of a pretty standard parameter function to switch columns to a relatively basic uh, custom table and you've seen that we can add functionality to that so that we can switch the date range and the granularity at the same time or we can even make the whole thing dynamic. This need seems like something that's fairly common. And um, but despite that, it took me quite a long time to find a solution and figure out how to use it. Uh, I would like to thank the contributors that I found on the web that helped me to understand this and put it together. And I hope that this summary is going to help you to create the solution that you want and save you many hours of uh, research that uh, I needed. Okay.